I have a talent link update for you. Oh, this is part three of a series, so if you're new here, you may want to watch parts one and two, and you can find a playlist link above. Now, this is not a sponsored ad for Actors Access or Talent Link. It's me sharing my experience with the service. And I'm happy to report that a legitimate theatrical agent contacted me via Talent Link for a meeting. Now, this is the first agent to contact me, so I'm feeling excited, nervous, simultaneously, although I have to admit that I caught myself romanticizing what can come from this. It's like, you know, when you're going on a first date and you're hoping that this new person you're about to meet will be the one. I have to keep my head out of the clouds and not get carried away with the idea that I will get these new auditions once I sign with the agent. I haven't even met this person yet and already I'm receiving imaginary auditions from them, right? Because getting a theatrical agent is hard for every actor. Now that the strike is over, I want to audition like every other a auditioning actor. But I need to be realistic and not fool myself into believing that this person is great or the one. Do you do this? Do you get excited and start dreaming about all the possibilities before you've even met the person? <sighs> it's hard being an actor sometimes. We just want to be chosen, but chosen by the right person. So I'm going to be sharing my research process prior to the meeting with this agent. And please watch to the end as I explain why I, I decided to stop watching videos or listening to agents interviews before meeting with them. Acting lessons learned. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tawana Floyd. So, okay, so during this two week subscription with Talent Link, I had interest meetings with three representatives. The first was a deceitful manager, which I discussed in part two of the series. And you'll wanna go and check that out to hear about the red flags I picked up if you're new to the channel. The second one was another manager based in New York City who despite being bi-coastal, had a great website and a decent roster of seemingly working actors. And I say seemingly because with managers, you can't tell from IMDB if the manager is getting these actors work or their agents. Nonetheless, as I mentioned in part two, I'm not looking for a manager. I'm not looking to add a manager to my team. So I declined their meeting offer. You know, it's been a long time since I've had an agent meeting. I think it was like 2017, so I don't really know how to take a meeting anymore. And to add to that concern, I have some insecurities about being 50 because Hollywood is described as a young person's game. I wonder if an agent will see value in adding a middle-aged actress with 10 plus co-star credits. And I'm also questioning if I have the right to be picky with who I choose for an agent. Should I take what I can get right now? build up my resume, and then see if I can up-level from there? Nah, I'm worthy of having a decent agent. There is someone out there who will value what I do and know exactly what to do with me, and I think I'm just gonna wait until I find them. Yeah. You know, I've been living in Los Angeles for 18 years, and during this time I've had three theatrical agents, all of whom took effort to secure. Eventually, I had to leave all three of them, and it took a lot of work to find a new agent every time. Now, you may ask why I left them in the first place. Well, I had to leave my first agent because he changed the business model to guest star and series regulars only, and I only had one co-star credit that he had gotten me, but I wasn't getting any auditions once he changed the office, the office preference, and I sensed that he wanted to release me but didn't know how to tell me. So I took his hint and I left. And then shortly thereafter, he left the business. Now the second agent was great at first, but then they made attempts to bully me. Even low key threatened to drop me for not doing what they asked. And we didn't see eye to eye many, on many things. So I just started to second guess myself and my instincts. And I decided it was time for me to leave. My third, they began focusing on interests that conflicted with being an agent. So I had to leave because I felt like they were putting more attention on that interest than agenting. Now, I almost passed on meeting the agent who contacted me because I knew them to be a commercial office. But when I looked on the sag After website to make sure that the office was either sag After franchised or under, what is it, the After 12C, the ATA, I learned that the agent had theatrical department as a specialty along with commercial. 
FYI, I'm sag after. so any agency that wants to represent union members has to be in compliance with the franchise rules. So if you're a union member, you can find a list of the franchise agents in your local on the sag after website, and you'll need to log in to do so. It's not open for everybody. Now, I'm going to make up an alias for this agency to protect their name, and I'll refer to them as Dave from Divinity Agency. Okay, so let's talk about my research. And, and if you're researching agents, you may want to take notes on what I'll share here. So the first step of my research is always IMDb Pro because the agency usually lists a lot of information there. And sometimes there is information from outside sources like at articles from Variety or Deadline Hollywood. And I will click on every tab, overview, credits, about, images, videos, box office, connections, clients, and news. So here's a list of all the things I researched on IMDb Pro. How many agents are currently working for the company? From what was listed, Dave is the only owner and there are no other agents employed. If he is working alone, then I expect the workload to be manageable. So for instance, I would be concerned if he handled more than say 175 clients, I think it would be difficult for one person to manage that, ma that many actors successfully. But if he has assistants or associates to help him out, then that would put my mind at ease. So how many clients does the agency have? Well, Dave had 95 uh, clients, which felt manageable for one agent. Do the actors have current theatrical credits? I clicked on all 95 of Dave's clients and he represented only one of them for television and film. The rest were commercials that he represented them for. So I'm thinking maybe David is starting a new theatrical department. However, I'm gonna need clarification on that before I move forward with meeting him. And then I look at the bio and the photo and the credits to see if anything is listed. There were none, there was no bio, there was no images, there was no photo. However, there was one credit uh, he hadn't produced anything, but he was interviewed for a podcast. And so I decided I was going to look that up later. Then I'm looking at news coverage in the media. Nothing there. There's nothing listed there. So it was time for me to learn if Dave had a theatrical department. And there was no mention of it in his correspondence to me, which read, Hi, Tawana. Dave from Divinity Agency here. Would love to chat over Zoom to discuss possible rep. If interested, please shoot over your casting profile. Thanks. I wondered if he had misread my talent link profile specifically requesting theatrical agent and I didn't want to waste any of our time. So I responded with the following. Hello, Dave. Thanks for reaching out to me to discuss representation. From my research, I found that you are a commercial agent. I'm happily repped commercially and was looking for theatrical representation. Are you opening a theatrical department? If so, I welcome a Zoom meeting, but if you're a commercial only, I appreciate the consideration and wish you continued success. And then I added my Actors Access profile. Dave responded, thanks for getting back to me, Tawana. Yep, would love to chat about theatrical only. Love your materials. Are you available for Zoom on Tuesday at noon? Now I asked a straightforward question when I asked, are you opening a theatrical department? And then he said, yep, would love to chat about theatrical only. He didn't answer the question. And if you watch part two of this series, you'll remember that I discussed using improv. There's an improv tool called the game to identify irregularities in communication. And for those who haven't seen part two, the game in improv refers to the first unusual thing that someone says or does in the scene when we're performing on stage. So in this situation, I perceived Dave's response as the game. It was an unusual thing to say in this particular scenario. And so like when people avoid answering straightforward questions, there's like a little red flag that goes off in my head. Maybe he's lying, but it could easily be that he's busy and he's responding quickly to my email. Or he just wanted to tell me more about it, about the theatrical side during our call. So I responded back to Dave. Hi Dave, happy to hear about theatrical only. And thank you for complimenting my materials. I am available to Zoom chat on Tuesday at noon. Now in the next part of my research, I looked for the podcast interview credited on Dave's IMDb Pro, which I found on YouTube. 
Unfortunately, the complete episode was behind a Patreon paywall, but I could access some short clips. And this helped me to put a face and a voice and a persona to the name. And then I stumbled upon another podcast where Dave was interviewed. And it was evident that this one asked more insightful questions because it was unrelated to acting. And so I got a better understanding of his background. Using this information, I created a timeline of his career as an agent, including his previous job before becoming an agent and how he started in the industry. I also visited his website, but I only found an agency logo and social media icons, which led me to the agency's Instagram page. And there was able to like view some of the highlights. And I saw that Dave's clients had thrown him a surprise birthday party in December. So the number of people who were packed in his office with balloons and cheer and happiness made me think he must be great and I unconsciously started to perceive him as a friend. Now, this is the reason why going forward, I will never watch or listen to an agent's interviews before a meeting, because I created a good first impression of Dave, painting a positive picture that Dave must be a good agent, and that diminished my ability to discern him during the interview. And I'm gonna talk about the interview in part four, so you wanna come back to that and hear about how my presumption led to a very embarrassing moment. You'll want to subscribe and hit the notification bells to be notified about that video. And um, I'm gonna actually put the playlist to parts one and two right here. And you can also check out how I set up my Actors Access profile right here. It's like the video that I wish I had when I first started working with Actors Access because nobody actually really tells us how to set it up. If you want to hear more of my personal experiences as a working actor in Los Angeles, you can check out my podcast, Acting Lessons Learned, wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.